everyone and thank you so much for joining me today. Now today's an exciting day because I have a brand new launch exclusive to Craft Stash. You'll find all the details linked below but I am launching the new Textures Snow Flurry collection. Now I'm not a, I'm not really a Christmas crafting girl um, but I do love winter themed projects so I've gone down the snowflakes route which you can use year after year after year so um, I'm going to be doing lots of videos on this channel so make sure you subscribe to see those if you are purchasing anything just subscribe anyway because I love to have you here now let's do a quick whiz through the new products and then I'm going to make a card and I'm going to be using this first product here which is the layering panel now this is the most exciting one this is the one that I am so thrilled to show you and I can't wait to show you how easy it is to use and the most beautiful cards that can come from it so it is a layering panel it's two dies it's sized at five by seven inches but you could easily trim this down if you wanted to now it's got two parts I'm not going to go into too much detail with this because I'm going to show you that in action in a moment and the kind of card we're going to be making is a bit similar to this one I mean look how beautiful that is isn't that stunning probably won't do the foam today it did take a while to have the foam raised up in between but you'll get the idea now this is a rerun of some snowflake dies that I had in my Jack Frost collection a couple of years ago that sold out so quickly we've actually made these ever so slightly smaller because they were huge last time they are still really good sized snowflake dies and they all layer up because of the number of fronds on them you can layer any of them and mix and match them beautifully for gorgeous dimensional snowflakes in fact I'm going to bring that same card back in again because we've got one just sitting on here so hopefully you can just about see that let's bring you in another one so you can see that hopefully a bit more clearly there isn't that stunning so that's created using these snowflake flake dies now aside from those dies I've also got the coordinating stamps as well so you've got all the same uh, sizes and shapes in stamp form so if you're a stamper rather than a die cutter you can be creating absolutely beautiful cards like this so that's a shadow stamping technique um, this one is the faux vellum technique there's lots and lots even for just stamping around the edges of your cards like this to give you a beautiful border there's lots of different techniques you can be doing with those then we've got the oval snowflake border now this is stunning again you can create really elegant cards with it I've got a lovely um, aperture card here which looks beautiful or you can go really nice and bright with any of these I don't always think winter should be just blues and silvers you know pop some pink in there as well whichever colors you prefer but it's this gorgeous oval um, snowflake frame but then also the plain border that can go around the edge to cut things like shaped card bases if you wish so that's two pieces in there there's background words as well these are going to create some really fun um, backgrounds for you now I've already shown you one which was on this card along with the um, dies but let's just show you this one as well because this is uh, what we call a never-ending shaker card because it goes edge to edge um, but I've just stamped onto vellum there not sorry not vellum stamped onto acetate there uh, heat embossed onto acetate with heat resistant acetate um, and it just makes for a really fun background with all those wintry words I am planning on putting a snowflake from those uh, dies in there on the top of this as well but yeah it's absolutely beautiful if you love your sort of modern effect cards with your multi fonts then lastly we've got a stamp and die set now this is just phenomenal the amount that you can do with this is amazing there's three large sentiments in here so we've got baby it's cold outside unique as a snowflake and let it snow they're in a hand drawn sort of hand uh, like brush lettered look um, but they're really special because not only do you get with each one let's see what have we got here uh, let it snow so with each one not only do you get the outline die so you can stamp and you can cut out from the outline die you can stamp if you want to do some fancy stamping techniques and then cut out the words you can do that because they perfectly fit alternatively if you just want to die cut and not use the stamps you're going to be left with a kind of a two finished look now let's just look at this particular um, word here so you can see here when you pop it out of the die you're going to get beautiful letter beautiful words a nice big bold sentiment in that fantastic font but alternatively now let me show you two cards that I've got here if I can just find them so there's one and again that's baby well that's baby it's cold outside but that one is taking what comes out of the die but what's left 
from the die is the negative. And what we've done is we've been really careful to ensure that the negative is all one piece. Absolutely no little pieces are coming away that you need to paper piece back in. So for example, inside the O, inside the A, inside the B, where you'd usually expect to have to pop those pieces back into the waist to make it make sense, you don't have to with these dies. So you can easily create two cards at once every time you cut out one of these sentiments. Um, it also makes for absolutely fantastic, I have to show you this card as well. And it makes absolutely brilliant shaker cards because you've got the aperture there that makes sense. It's readable. Usually an aperture from any sentiment die isn't readable because all the pieces from the inside of the letters will fall out. Um, but these have been cleverly made so that they don't. So I've actually got some glitter. It's, it's white glitter. You can only just see it on a video, um, but it's white glitter inside there moving around. So we've got a fabulous shaker in there too, which I love. Okay, now on to the demonstration because I'm sure you want to see some of these in action and we're going to go back to, first of all, these panels. So the layering panel, this was kind of like the very beginning for me with this collection. This is where it all started. So I'm going to take a piece of card stock or rather a card base that is already prepared for a five by seven card. So just folding this along the score line, this is actually one that's um, been pre-made rather than me making it myself because I would need a 14 inch piece of cardstock to do it with a top fold. So my top fold cards I tend to purchase ready made. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this panel, which is kind of the bolder design, directly into my card base. Now you can see that fits uh, onto a five by seven card with just a little bit of a border. Now, what's clever about this is there's no outer cutting edge. So you could pop this into a, a larger card or a smaller card, and you could still work around it working without pieces falling out everywhere. So I'm just going to pop a bit of tape here. I'm not going to go around the edge because I don't want to peel off my tape and peel off any of my edge here of my card, but I am going to just go around those center pieces, the ones that I know are going to fall out anyway eventually. Let's straighten that up a bit. I'm going to open this up, and this is why part of the reason I use top fold cards, and I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine. Now being a card base, I'm always going to run this through forwards and backwards, just to make sure I get a really good cut. So I've just gone through twice there, and you'll see straight away, we have got an absolutely perfect cut. I've got to pop all the pieces out, but that is really lovely. So just pop all the pieces out and you'll see you've kind of got a bit of an odd shape here. So um, it's not going to make sense at the moment, but wait until we do the next layer. So the next piece, I'm going to use this gorgeous decorative snowflake element here. This is ideal for using on its own as well. You don't have to use it in the way that I'm using it. I'm going to cut this from a piece of white cardstock. Now, once again, I'm going to go forwards and then I'm just going to bring it back to ensure I've got a really good cut. So far, I've had absolutely no issues with this cutting through even the strongest of cardstock straight away. Look at that, absolutely perfect cut all the way through. Isn't that beautiful? Best thing to do, just pop something out of the middle. If it's cut in the middle, it will have cut everywhere else. So as you can see, what also happens with this decorative panel, so the one with the detail in, is it remains within your cardstock. So you could cut this directly into your card base if you didn't want this layered look. If you don't want to cut it into your card base, and as me, you want to cut it into a different cardstock panel, you'll just need to trim the edge afterwards. So once it's all been trimmed, you can apply some adhesive to the back. I find a spray adhesive for something as uh, delicate as this is really nice and quick to do, but you can apply just a wet glue if you like. Spray adhesives, usually you just need to leave about 30 seconds before you apply them to your project. Give them chance to go tacky. So just spraying the back of that, and then you'll see straight away exactly where this needs to sit. Now a little tip for you, I would say don't use the same cardstock for the base as the uh, layer on top. Just because all white cardstocks, they kind of have a slight variation in white colour. And if you can get that, intentionally get that slight variation, you're going to be able to see 
the beautiful dimension just that little bit better isn't that just stunning now of course you can put different colors behind this if you prefer now i'm going to come in with this teal color um, it is an absolutely beautiful green color perfect for christmas and i'm going to just mat this behind here so just using a wet glue to adhere this in I would probably say maybe pop a message in a small message inside but if you've got a long message to write maybe pop that on the back because you really want to see this dark color on the inside so it stands out against those beautiful shapes isn't that gorgeous now over the top of this I am going to be using the snowflake dies I'm going to start with this beautiful large snowflake I think we might go with green or the teal and gold for this one um, so I'm going to layer up this snowflake along with this snowflake and then lastly let's go with this one as well so what I'm going to do is white on the top gold in the uh, center or I might go gold here and green in the middle to tie in with the background but either way I can cut these out of lots of colors and I can play with layering them up now when it came to cutting the snowflakes in the end I only had or I found this beautiful glitter gold and I thought that would look stunning but I only had it in this width so I chose to go with the green for the background the teal green color for the background it kind of reminds me of the distress oxide color or distress ink color pine needles that's a really deep rich green color so I'm going to put that there in the center of the card then I'm going to put the gold on the top. Now I didn't want to cover up this beautiful gold with too much of uh, white by adding another snowflake on the top. So I'm just going to add my sentiment on the top of that. And this is the word joy, which is a gray board piece. This is from the original Jack Frost collection that I was mentioning at the beginning. Um, so they are still available. There's a number of different Christmas sentiments in gray board strips like this. There's a small handful of items left but um, you can see those online at craft stash if you just search Jack Frost so I've just got a little bit of glue there that seeped through to the gold that will all dry clear anyway so maybe centralize that a little bit better um, but there we go isn't that just gorgeous so hoping to get the decent angle so you can really see the detail in that background there isn't it absolutely stunning and like I say you could just cut the decorative panel into your card front if you wished instead uh, this just gives it a little bit more stability just got a bit of glue on there look but a bit more stability having it as a more solid shape lots of beautiful layers but yeah I really really love that a very elegant and sophisticated Christmas card so if you love this please do check down in the description below because the links to everything including the new collection are there plus things like distress oxides that I use all the time my blending brushes and all my other tools and materials so please do drop me a subscribe if you like this video and you enjoyed all the tips and techniques and I'll be back again very soon soon with another video. Take care everybody.